Welcome back to the channel guys and what is a better idea than a beautiful Sunday and another trucking vlog. So today um, many of you asked me in the comments down below how to become a truck driver and what it is like and how much you earn and all those things that comes with it. So I figured today we're going to go into Scania today, the R580 and we're going to go back all the way up to Mio again in northern parts of Sweden and I figured I'm going to show you some, uh, some of the driving and I'm mostly going to inform you about what, what it's like and how much you earn, all those things that you need to know to become a Swedish truck driver. All right, let's get into it. So this is our parking space right here. It is cold out, so I started my truck already. It is dirty, crazy dirty. This is pretty tight. Also, I am very sorry. I just got into the truck here, so it is a mess. Put the glasses there. I'm so sorry it's a mess here. I haven't started the day really. I just, I didn't even unpack yet. I just left everything here and just started filming straight away. But I'm gonna pack this in and we're gonna, we're gonna get going. So starting today, putting it in drive, releasing the handbrake. I'm gonna set the mirrors as I want to have them. Like that's pretty good. Coffee's in the coffee machine. I can see myself in the, in the pad or iPad or whatever you call this. Can turn the heater on on the mirrors lights are on and we're good and as you know as always each and every one of us have to go to buffenergy.eu and check out their new energy supplement it is my personal preference it's what i use i love it and it does help me get through each and every day it even helps me edit all these videos for you guys they come in five flavors right now and if you use my personal discount code which is alex 20 and that gives you 20 percent off of the entire order Go to buffenergy.eu and check it out right now. Let's continue the video. Personal discount code, which is right here. And I'm also gonna link it in the description. And I'm also going to give you the link to the webpage in the description. I do have to mention that yesterday we uh, continued my leg tattoo. And it really does hurt. So if I have to do any walking and, or anything else like that, then you know why I'm I'm walking like a cripple because it does hurt. We did the backside of the knee and it was just so painful. And my leg is a bit swollen right now, but the driving part should be good. Number one, becoming a truck driver in Sweden. Starting off with this topic is number one, the driver's license. So in order to get a trucking license, you have to get a B license which is for a regular car. That's just a regular driver's license and you get a B license first. Once you have a B license, you apply and try to, or try to, you do get the C license, which is for trucks. And after that, if you wanna haul like a bigger trailer behind the truck, you have to get a CE license. The E is for the trailer and the C is just for the truck. So you can literally drive like a box truck uh, on a C license but if you do want to drive something bigger with a trailer like this like we're today you have to get a C for this truck and then you have to get an E for the trailer behind it so you have to get a CE license in order for drive this in order to drive this combination second of all you are not done here you need something called YKB in Swedish it's EKB and that stands for I don't know how to translate that to English, but um, it's yrkeskrävande behörighet in Swedish, which means um, like required uh, authority to work or to, to drive pretty much. And um, so what that is, is you have to uh, complete a course, which I do believe, I haven't looked it up and it was a long time ago I did that, but I do believe it is 240 hours of school time and then there's a test that you have to pass once you do that you get your YKB and that is like a permit to be able to work with this so you're not done once you get your C or CE license and also jumping back to the first topic you cannot get the CE if you don't have the C so you have to get the C first which makes sense right because it's a continuation of the C CE uh, sorry for being over explain for sorry for over explaining here but you probably get the point 
let's discuss the cost of getting the license in the YKB. So if you want a C license, I would say count anywhere from 500 euros to maybe two, three grand, I would say. Um, it can probably get more expensive if you're even, if, if it's, if you're like a slow learner. Um, or if you, you uh, need a lot of lessons. I'm not really sure, but in order to get C and the CE, I would say count anywhere from 2,000 to uh, 6,000 euros, and that's uh, 20,000 crowns up till 60,000 crowns. I've heard stories. Um, I was pretty quick. I'm gonna tell you what I paid for everything uh, in the end. And the YKB is, it depends on which school you go to, uh, they charge, differently and um, I do believe that you can they can charge you anywhere from from I've seen I, I I've seen from two grand two thousand euros up to um, like four thousand or something like that and also in order to drive like a truck like a, a pallet truck at the warehouses you also need a truck license for that and that's usually around anywhere from 300 bucks or 300 euros to like five six hundred maybe I'm, I'm pretty much guessing here and keep in mind that it was it was a long time ago I did this so my calculations and my numbers are from way back and also shoot I almost forgot you have to do uh, <laughs> I'm sorry you have to do a medical in order to uh, apply for the C and the CE and all that uh, so you have to do like a medical test you have to go to like a doctor or um, I don't know what what standards need to be uh, or what boxes need to be checked in order for them to be eligible but um, you have to get like a, like they test your eyesight and they test your they check your uh, blood blood pressure and all that make sure you're good so you're not a danger to society while driving and also it's um, they're gonna check if you have like diabetes or anything else that may affect your driving and may affect the, the work itself so you have to get a medical too and that is like step one I almost forgot that so I'm saying this afterwards uh, <laughs> I'm sorry that's like one of the more important parts uh, moving on to sum it up uh, what I paid for everything I got the C license I got the CE and I got the YKB and the truck license to be able to drive the trucks uh, the pallet trucks at the warehouses I paid around five I think five thousand euros and that is around five thousand USDs and around fifty thousand Swedish crowns for everything and this was I believe this was say seven eight years ago or something like that I'm not really sure I'd have to look that up but so those are old numbers I'm not sure what it costs today but you got the first topic done so that's pretty much it the license part how to get it um, how much it costs and I would say count count like anywhere from like two or three months minimum up to like six maybe up to a year depending on how how fast you want to do it but I mean you can spread it out of course and it takes more time but I'd say count anywhere from two to three months up to a year until you're done pretty much moving on to step number two working hours this is gonna be hard I'm gonna try to explain this I'm not gonna explain everything but I'm gonna try to explain as much as I can and as informative as I can so you have this uh, e-log thing here that you put your card in I've shown you that in a previous video and you are allowed to drive for four and a half hours within those four and a half hours you have to have a 45 minute break either and you can also split that divide it into 15 minutes first and then you can drive a bit more or whatever you want to but not more than four and a half hours and then you have to have a 30 minute break it can't be 14 and then 29 it has to be 15 30 it can be 20 and 40 that's that does count but the mini, minimum is 15 and then 30 and same thing with the 44 minute uh, sorry 45 minute break you cannot do 44 minutes and then start driving because then your time will not reset once you get a reset you're allowed to drive for four and a half hours more and then if you want to 
you can have another 45 minutes or divide 1530 and then you get one extra hour and you can do that twice per week and that is called extending your driving hours and as I said you're only allowed to do that twice per week and but you have to have uh, during the full day you have to have had two full 45 minute breaks either divide them or have them as as one 45 minute doesn't matter but you have to have two of them and you can extend two times per week for one more hour all right moving on uh, you are allowed to drive I can actually show you in the display here because Scania has this function right here so you see that I can drive the middle one I can drive nine hours uh, 29 uh, 26 more minutes sorry because uh, I've driven 34 minutes already throughout this day and within seven days I do believe you can drive for 56 hours uh, and then you have to have a weekly reset the weekly reset is a minimum of 45 hours but you can uh, reduce it to a minimum of 24 hours but all the hours from 45 hours uh, from 45 to 24 Let's say you go from, you reduce it from 45 and you reduce it down to 40. You have to compensate by within the, uh, the, the first three weeks, you have to um, add those five hours that you skipped on top of a regular 45 to compensate pretty much, so to speak. Do correct me if I'm wrong and do look it up yourselves uh, within the books. This is just um, me speaking freely here and I'm not reading off of anything or just, you know, this is... In the back of my head and usually we just have a schedule where this just automatic automatically works and we don't really have to think that much about it uh, so do correct me if I am wrong on any pointer I just want to make uh, have that said so you don't go uh, and use everything that I tell you and then believe that is a hundred percent fact I might be wrong on some points and then do keep that in mind that you might have to check it up or I would advise you to look it up yourselves but this is pointers and I do believe that's how it is and so you are allowed to uh, have a weekly ordinary reset 45 hours and you can reduce it down to 24 but all those hours that you reduce you have to compensate within the, the uh, upcoming three weeks and I would say that is and also I almost forgot a daily reset is 11 hours for an ordinary weekly or sorry ordinary daily reset you can reduce the daily reset down from 11 hours down to nine hours three times per week so ordinary 11 hours of sleep or rest and reduced is nine hours not eight hours 50 minutes nine hours and then you can do nine hours three times a week the rest has to be 11 hours all right so that is pretty much the working hours or what you're allowed to do speaking of working hours some of you might not want to know what it's like and how many hours per day you work this obviously depends on who you work for what you do at work if you're uh, maybe you're a, a truck driver driving um, like a, a garbage truck then you're probably gonna drive from anywhere like from like five in the morning until lunchtime or, or whatever and then you go home and then you're done for today but if you do uh, over the road work as I do um, count anywhere from I'd say minimum eight nine hours a day which is a very short day but it is very common and usual that truck drivers work anywhere from 10 11 hours per day up till 15 and you're allowed to work 15 hours per day as of speaking of working hours um, me usually personally I usually work anywhere from uh, 12 hours till 15 per day and I usually work anywhere from five four five to uh, six days per week so speaking of working hours let's talk about the pay then because we do know that we get a lot of hours in uh, as as being um, a truck driver so I'm not reading off of anything I'm not using any sources of any kind this is just me and what I believe and what I've heard and what I know um, I do believe that 
truck drivers usually earn anywhere from 16 to 20 euros. That is also 16, 20, uh, 16 to 20 USDs. Anywhere from 160 to 200 crowns uh, per hour. And that is before tax. And in Sweden, we pay around 31% tax off of that. It does depend on who you work for, what you do at your job, and some other factors, but that is usually what you can uh, count or use as a reference. I'd say a trucker makes, a local trucker that drives, you know, just like nine hours a day, staying local, coming home every night, they make anywhere from, I'd say, uh, 2,800, 2,800 euros, 2,800 bucks. Uh, that is 28,000 Swedish crowns up to like maybe 3,200. If you do over the road work as I am doing, you get more hours in and also if you sleep in the truck and you don't get to go home at night, you're also allowed to have a, uh, a tax deductible, like a payout called a tractamente. And that is usually, I it's, it's pretty complicated, but for a full day, if you go out, sleep in the truck, and then go back the other day, and then you come home, that's uh, usually a payout of uh, 36 euros, 36 bucks, 360 Swedish crowns, I'd say, I think so. Um, and that is tax-free, and you're allowed to do that. Like, that's daily for the days that you're gone, and you're not. It's to, so that you're able to uh, uh, afford uh, buying food out, or, or, you know, paying for like a shower, or whatever it is that you do. Um, but uh, if you do over the road work as I am and uh, you should count anywhere from because you get more hours in usually you get anywhere from 200 hours up to maybe I've seen 320 300 hours per month and that is extreme uh, but you can make anywhere from three grand up to like five grand uh, so that is uh, 3,000 euros to 5,000 euros but then keep in mind after that you have to pay 31% tax so you don't end up with much so you have to do a lot of hours if you want to make money in this business uh, but it is a nice job night job it is a nice nice job and it has its benefits and also working night shifts pays out a little bit extra not much usually I think it is somewhere around 33 crowns extra per hour so it's not much and um, as you do know already we do get long shifts right so that's pretty much it for the for the salary part moving on to the next step this guy is out in my lane that was a mess uh, I'm sorry uh, so moving on to the next step some of you have asked me about um, health and uh, fitness and what I do to keep in shape and how I um, schedule that so what I do is uh, when I work, I travel from Stockholm up to, let's say, Umeå. And then I'm gone for that period of time from when I leave up to Umeå. And then I sleep there, I don't work out, and then I come back. But when I do come back the next day, before I go to Umeå or before I go and do make the trip, I go to the gym in the morning. Um, it is harder when I work like this and when I don't work as local as I can and should and have done sometimes. It makes it harder. Um, but I do manage to use my weekends as well. So usually I work out um, Friday or if, it depends on when I get home. Usually I work Sundays and, and until Saturday morning. But I use the Friday, Saturday, Sunday as well and try to make sure to work out those days because that is when I do have the time to. But in between the shifts, I try to uh, work out and prioritize that. So. I put a lot of time into uh, making making lunch boxes really quick and then heading to the gym uh, because you you have to uh, stay active otherwise you're gonna crumble and, and rot away <laughs> and you don't want to do that so that's my tip try to get uh, you can even like bring barbells in the truck if you want to and do some lifting in here or sit-ups or, or whatever or take walks whenever you have a, a break uh, that's that's my uh, tip but you do as you please and you do find your own schedule and what works for you. But that's how I do it and uh, feel free to uh, use my strategy if you want to. Also, I have a question from Mark Knowles in the comments and he's asking about the uh, truck weight, length and uh, some other questions too and I'm gonna try to answer those uh, the best I can 
And he's also asking about the pay, uh, asking if we get paid like a percentage of the load. I have never heard, I know that's common in the US, I have never heard of that version here in, in Scandinavia or in Europe. Uh, maybe it can be done, I don't know, you have to negotiate with your uh, with the trucking company that you work for. Uh, I've never seen that in Sweden, usually you get paid by the hour and uh, some people do have monthly pay and that is like a fixed pay and then it varies depending on if they work like overtime or it all depends on the deal but we do not uh, get paid by the kilometer or by like a percentage of the load as which is very common in the US I do believe it is a smart thing to be uh, paid a percentage of the load because if you're a driven person who likes to work fast and get stuff done then you would benefit from having that kind of pay system um, compared to uh, what we do right now when uh, when you just get paid like a monthly or, or hourly rate because then if you just you know you can just sit around all day and you're still gonna get paid um, as much as the guy who is uh, willing to work so pros and cons not really sure but that's how usually that's usually how it works here in Sweden second question from Mark Knowles in the comments is size of the trucks so usually if you drive like a dry van or a reefer this is the size that we're driving today and they are 4.5 meters tall or high um, and then they are 2.6 meters wide and you can be up to 25 meters long uh, usually you're uh, 24 meters when you are 25.25 to be precise you drive like a trailer with uh, something called we call a dolly I don't know if it's called a dolly in, in English but it is actually a trailer that you connect like a, a, a separate axle to and then you haul that and you get three more pallet spaces and then you end up being 25.25 meters uh, that is the maximum that you can be but if you have like a fixed trailer um, with like four axles or five axles they are usually uh, 30 pallets and that makes the combination 24 meters long so you're allowed to be 25.25 usually you are 24 meters long and four and a half meters uh, in height and 2.6 meters wide um, speaking of the weight and the load capacity it totally depends on if you're driving like a reefer because uh, if they're equipped with a reefer uh, system the like the gross uh, gross weight of the truck is of course heavier uh, than a dry van and that you have to uh, deduct uh, weight load weight from that because of uh, you cannot weigh more than 64 tons but then some roads do accept 74 tons and that is 74,000 kilos I don't know how much that is in pounds you'd have to look that up let's see if I can uh, translate that or convert that for you guys but usually you're 64 tons 64,000 kilos and uh, empty truck and trailer it totally depends on the combination you drive and how many axles and stuff like that that pretty much uh, covers the basics of the, the size and the weight I know this video contains a lot of talking you guys but I'm trying to help you guys out as much as I can do you hope that I um, answered all your questions that you wanted to uh, wanted to have answered and uh, don't forget to like and comment and uh, subscribe to the channel it helps a lot and if there's anything else that you think I'm, I've uh, missed in this video then let me know in the comments and I will try to uh, include that in the next video I will see you guys in the next drive safe